bringing a drawing to life, shading is vital to give a 3D image and really help the image pop off the page. But of course, you already knew this, which is why you're at this video. So without wasting any more time, let's get to it. Today, we're gonna to look at TLC. This isn't tender loving care, this is technique, lighting, and contrast. And I'm gonna show you how all three link into shading. Starting with technique, you're going to want to hold the pencil nearer to the hilt. This will allow a smaller angle between the graphite and the paper. As you can see here, an upright pencil leaves crude lines, whereas the addition of a tilt removes the abrupt changes in pencil direction and allows a far smoother coverage to be established. The pencil direction that you use is really dependent on what you're drawing. Here you can see I use a back and forth motion, this is quite linear. You can then layer this up or just press a bit harder in the places that you want to go a bit darker and even remove some of the spaces you want to be lighter with an eraser. I then move on to a circular kind of motion, this is a bit more rough and kind of leaves less of a linear um, look to it. So either can be used interchangeably on your drawings dependent on what you're drawing. To get a smooth shade, don't shade <laughs> with a sharpened pencil. You need to first of all put your pencil through some paint. Now onto the lighting. I'm sure you've seen this before, but I'm going to draw seven boxes by the side of each other and slowly gradiate from one to the other, with the lightest on the left and the darkest on the right. You can also see that I adopt kind of like an overhand grip on the pencil. This just allows like a further like acute kind of angle to be established, um, which really helps to like bring the graphite close to the paper and get the smoothest kind of blend possible. However, you may lose some control doing this, so I wouldn't recommend doing it on very detailed drawings. I then number the boxes so I have a numerical value for each of the different shades. I then move on to drawing a really simple sphere and establishing the light source. I now replace our numbers with the tones that they represent. This isn't really kind of a permanent fix because you don't necessarily want lots of numbers on your drawings. However, it's a really good visualisation of how you can gradiate between the lightest areas and the darkest areas which are represented by the zero is the lightest and the darkest is the seven. It's also worth mentioning that the pencil strokes need to follow the contours of the shape. This kind of comes with practice and a familiarity of the shapes that you are drawing. And if you kind of nail this, the shading alongside what I'm about to talk about next, which is the contrast, can work hand in hand to create absolutely amazing drawings. Onto the contrast. You'll hear me talk about this a lot in a quite a few videos because it's really important. Contrast is the difference in tonal values between two areas. As you can see here, there isn't much difference between the two tones, meaning there's quite a low contrast. However, here, there is quite a bit of difference between the two tones, hence it has a really high contrast. To really represent this, I'm going to draw two cylinders. The one on the left is going to be one of really low contrast, and the one on the right is going to be really like high contrast. So as you can see on the left, it is quite washed out, and from the darkest areas, we don't have much room in terms of tones, because we've already used probably like the two that we had in our scale for the darkest areas. There's not much really room to gradiate to the highlights, so not much difference between the shadow and the light. However, on the darker side, so on the more contrasted side on the right, um, you can see that we're starting at around a seven, so that we have lots of leeway to go all the way down the scale from six, seven, all the way down to zero for the highlight in the middle. So this is the reason why the one on the left looks a bit pants, to be honest, and the one on the right looks less pants. So here are some more complex drawings. You can see how you've got that contrast there. There's no kind of pencil strokes that you can see. It's all just texture that's meant to be there. And obviously there's kind of an understanding of light there as well. So this is why they kind of pop off the page and appear 3D. That's all from me today. If you've enjoyed this video or I don't know, found any value in it, um, please consider liking and subscribing. And I'll see you next time with more creative content.